Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS. And in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing RAS Mapper, specifically the settings and options and spatial reference system. So what I have on the screen here is the settings and options page. This will be the first link in the video description. And then uh, the next page over here, this is a spatial reference system. This will be the second link in the video description. All right, let's go ahead and get started. If you don't already have your HECRAS open, uh, go ahead and do that. And then open up your RAS Mapper window down below here. You can open that by going up to GIS Tools, RAS Mapper, or clicking on this button right here for RAS Mapper. All right, so what we're gonna be looking at in this lesson is Tools, Options menu. And then also uh, we'll take a brief stint over to the set projection and add web imagery. But mostly here in Tools, Options, so what happens here is we've got a dialog box to define our RAS mapper options. Over on the left panel is sort of our menu. And then the main section here is the actual data values that we're going to be changing. This left panel is divided into two parts. There's project settings and global settings. Now project settings is really for your project specific uh, changes that you want to make for projection, general, and render mode. And then your general settings, this will be for all your HECRAS projects moving forward, more of a, a permanent change. Both of these sections have a general tab, so general under project settings, general under global settings, and they both have a button here to restore defaults. So at any time, you can just click that button and restore the default values. Let's go ahead and start at the beginning for project settings. If I click on projection right here, Setting the projection for your project is important for a number of reasons. First of all, it will ensure that the terrain and geometric data are all in the same coordinate system. Secondly, if you're using web imagery or background data, then you can um, project that appropriately into your RAS mapper. And then uh, lastly, if you want to bring in other external data, then it will know which coordinate system to actually use. This menu right here for um, RAS Mapper Options Projection is also accessible if you click on Project and then Set Projection. It will open you up to the same RAS Mapper Options and pre-select you to the, the Projection menu right here on the left. Here is the Projection file. We're just going to click on the Open Folder button to select our Projection file. This is a .prj file, typically. Right here, I have one saved. It's albers equal area .prj. And what it has is it just added in that file path to the text box and then to the text area down below, here is the definition. So this .prj file is basically just a text file. And what you're seeing here is the text that defines that projection. If I open up this file here in a text editor, I have it right here. So it's basically the same text that you were seeing in that RAS Mapper options page. The authority in this case is EPSG 9822. You can download these uh, projections based on whichever area on Earth your project is located in. But if you're not really sure, there's also a link down here that says, help me find a coordinate reference system. And then there's a link here for specialreference.org. And it opened me up to this page right here where it gives a little bit of an introduction. And then you can find the exact file format and the locations that you're looking for. So for instance, I'll type in EPSG. I could go ahead and navigate to that EPSG file I had, which was 9822, if I wanted to. Uh, there's a number of other ones that give you the general area, and there's um, about 20 or 30 on this page, but you can click to the next page and find additional projections. So this one's in Korea, it looks like, Qatar. Generally speaking, you'll already know what your projection is or what your, which uh, have already have a projection file, either uh, separately or as part of a shape file. I'm looking one for North America, and I think it's a couple more pages down. Here we go. Here's a, a few for California, for instance. So if I was in like the Sacramento area, I already went ahead and uh, confirmed that I think it's this zone two one, EPSG 2226. And then uh, when I click that, it gives me some metadata about the uh, outer bounding lat long, uh, which areas it includes, like county names, for instance, as well as a map right here. So this is a map of uh, just a little rectangle, rectangle located in Northern California. And then I can actually get that well-known text, that WKT text right here, and then use this data right here. So this could be my projection if my project for HECRAS and RAS Mapper was located in the Sacramento area. I'll just go ahead and go copy and then go to my project file right here. 
and then I'm just going to create a, a .prj file on my own, wkt espg 2226prj Yes. Okay, let me go ahead and open that up. So this is just going to be a text file. Oops. Okay, so it's trying to open up in HECRAS. I need to change the default application that this opens up in. Just the text editor would be fine. All right, so I've got that saved right there. I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, save it, close. Let's go back to HECRAS. So I'm back in RAS Mapper, and if I wanted to select that other projection that I just created for the Northern California area, boom, there it is. Projections can be defined as ESRI uh, PRJ files, WKT files, the well-known text that we did right here, PROJ4 files, or EPSG. Using a smaller scale will result in less chance of distortion as well in the event that we want to bring in some web imagery. But once our projection is set, web imagery is now an option. So I'm going to click Apply, click OK, and then go over to Project and Add Web Imagery. And as you see, we now have a number of options for uh, GIS, Google, Bing, or uh, street maps, open street maps. And these background web imagery will only work if we have a coordinate reference system defined here in uh, the projection of the RAS mapper options. Below the um, definition, we have warping method. And the default here is the GDAL warp method. Warping here refers to the process of geometric transformation of an image or spatial data set to align with a specific coordinate system or reference, like the one that we've already set here. If the GDAL warp method doesn't properly align reprojected data, then use the alternative HECRAS raster method right here. The user manual also mentions that the GDAL performs a validation check and will also give an error warning in case some of the data is invalid. So for instance, this data right here came from the text file, which I um, assume was correct, but we can go ahead and make a change. I'll just go ahead and add uh, the numbers one, two, and three up here, and then one, two, and three right here. This should trigger an error warning. So let's go ahead and uh, upload that same file. But of course I saved the changes, so here it is. And then if I click apply, Okay, no error warning yet. Let me click OK and then just enter back in. So tools, options. Ah, so this is the error message I was expecting. GDAL issued a warning that the projection file is corrupt. You may experience problems using HECRAS with this projection file. All right, perfect. <laughs> I've never been so happy to see an error message, but I was just confirming that, yeah, here's the error warning right here. And then here is the, the one, two, three here, and then the one, two, three as well. Okay, so I'm going to go back and fix that and then save it, and then let's go ahead and just enter it back in here and hit apply. Okay, I think I have to close it and then reopen it for that air warning to go away, and it went away. Looks good. My last note on projections is that this happens once per project, and oftentimes it'll already be done for you. This is not something you do every day, and I'm not trying to diminish the importance of the correct projection, but it is uh, just not as common of a task as a number of the other tasks we'll be doing in HECRAS and RAS Mapper. Also wanted to mention that projection files can be generated using GIS shape files. So if you have a, a vector shape file that's been added, it could very well have a projection file associated with it as well. And it's also important to keep track of the unit system, not just the, the projection. All right, let's move on to the next item here under project settings, general options. These are the options that will most likely change on a project by project basis. Since it's in the general category, it's sort of a catch all. These don't particularly pertain to any particular group. For instance, the first one is computation decimal places. For instance, if you're using uh, length, in feet, then horizontal will be to the nearest one decimal place, and then vertical will be to the nearest two decimal places. River cross sections, this is by default, or right here it's set to units of feet, but we can also go miles, meters, or kilometers, and then the decimal places for feet is zero. Uh, obviously, if you were going to use miles, you'd want more decimal places, and it looks like the default changed for me automatically just when I selected uh, miles for my units. This cross section of river stations, this refers to the river stationing for 1D hydraulic objects, such as cross sections and structures like bridges or lateral structures, inline structures, and so on. 
All right, the next one down is elevation point filtering, and we have two different values to provide. This is the cross section points at 450, and then lateral structure points at 1000. Now you probably shouldn't need 450 points to define a cross section or a thousand to define a lateral structure. In fact, you should use the reduced number of points for a cross section or a lateral structure and only use as many points that are really required to adequately define the shape of that cross section or lateral structure. I think 100 is probably plenty and 450 is just got to be overkill. Uh, same thing with the lateral structure. All right, the next one down here is profile plot point density. And I did not read anything about this one in the user's manual, so I'm sorry. Let's move on to the last one here. It's overlay options. So when you're looking at your RAS mapper, you have the option to overlay a legend, a scale bar, a north arrow, and then a greater sign symbol to the legend. In my previous video, the overview to RAS mapper, I, I was curious where the north arrow was. And now I know that it was just unselected and it could be added right here. And as mentioned before, there is a restore defaults button right here. Apply saves. All right, next up is render mode. Render mode is used to control how computation results are plotted in RAS Mapper. So at the top, we have water surface rendering mode. We have sloping, sloping for cell centers and face centers, and then horizontal. For the first option here, the default sloping for cell centers is really just a, sort of a hybrid between the two. Next one down is uh, pipe rendering options. And I did not see anything in the user's manual, the heck, the RAS Mapper user's manual about this topic. I think it's a newer topic and they just haven't updated the user's manual yet. So I don't want to uh, tell you anything that's not true. The next one down is plot tolerances. This allows the user to not plot map values below a specified elevation right here. So right now it's just set to 0 0.001, but you can change that as well. And then the last one here is rendering engine. GDI plus is the default. This is highly compatible. So this is most likely going to work, but the user manual mentions that this other one here, the direct 2D is a uh, higher quality or experimental, it says here, but probably less compatible. All right, let's move on to the general settings, the global settings, starting with general. And what we're looking at here, it gives us the option to define the symbology of different map tools, such as the selected color, highlighted color, measure tool, zoom outline, zoom fill. So what you wanna do is just go ahead and click on that symbology here. So for selected color, we could change the color. We can uh, change the transparency, uh, the hatch style, if you want it to be hatched. And if it is hatched, I believe you get options down here for background color. All right, I'm not gonna click on all these, but like here's the line style. You can change the color, the width, whether it has dashes and transparency. Also map display, we have the number of decimal places. So for instance, if you're hovering over a topographic map and the cursor gives you the elevation, you might wanna see the elevation to the nearest two decimal places. So if it was in feet, that'd be to the nearest hundredth of a foot. That's where that's controlled. Then we have restore defaults right here. All right, next up is RAS layers. This is similar to the global settings right here, except it's specific to hydrologic elements. For instance, rivers, cross sections, bank lines, and everything here. We have lines, we have areas, there's points, there's also symbols like the, the pump symbol here. And then just keep in mind that this is not all of them. You can scroll down and find a number of others right here with another button to restore default values. Generally speaking, I'm going to leave all my colors and settings here the same because if someone else is looking at my screen, they may be more likely used to using the default colors. And especially for making the videos like this, I want people to uh, see the default coloring so they're not uh, confused by what they're looking at on the screen. All right, next up is map surface fill. So what we're looking at here is the map surface fill. I don't have any map loaded into my RAS mapper, but if I had like a topographic map, for instance, then the terrain would be defined by this coloring scheme. What I have is stretched for now, but I could also use discrete. And then if I had, yeah, let's keep it on discrete and then click on edit. In this edit box, I can define what are the actual range of values that it's discretized by. And then if it's stretched, then I could specify a different color bank right here. Okay, so that's how that works. Let me close that up. There's also transparency and a few other tools down below for copying, pasting, and resetting. 
Okay, so I'm going to close that up. And then lastly, we have editing tools. The editing tools options allows the user to customize how the interface looks and reacts to the user interaction with the edit layer. This symbology here refers to the symbology of the layer that is currently open for editing. So we have point, line, fill, and the action color. And then down below that, there's tolerances here for near point and near line. Near point is referring to the snapping distance and the units here is in pixels. So, you know, there's that five pixels is actually fairly close, but you can change that in the case your cursor is uh, snapping to a point and uh, you don't want it to, then you can decrease this number or vice versa. If uh, you want it to snap and it's not, you can increase this number. Near line, this refers to uh, 15 pixels is what it says. It's the maximum distance between the cursor and the line for a new point to be added to that line as a point as opposed to a new point being added, uh, but not but off the line. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Of course, you can zoom in and zoom out in the RAS mapper interface to also kind of help you control the uh, snapping tolerances here for both point and line. All right. So down below here, we have restore defaults. And then, of course, our buttons for OK, which is save and exit, cancel, which is exit without saving, and then apply, which is save but don't exit. OK, so let's go ahead and click OK. So that's it for our lesson on RAS Mapper, specifically the tools, options, and going through the different settings and options and spatial ref reference system that's available to us in RAS Mapper.